Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be checking out Android 14 for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. So this is very much like the Android 13 for the Raspberry Pi, and I'll leave a link over here for that video because I actually, I think I mentioned some stuff in there that is still usable with this video as well. The techniques that we're gonna be using there is exactly the same as we are using here, minus the magics. So we're gonna be checking this out. Now it's actually from the same person who developed this called Constakang, and I'll leave a link down in the description below for most of the stuff that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, so the main thing is check out the AOSP Android 14 and his post about everything. If you are coming from Android 13, there is an actual upgrade or flashable TWRP. So you don't have to actually do a full imaging like I did. You could just transfer this file, but we're gonna be doing a full image, uh, which is this file over here. And he does go down the list of what works and what doesn't. Now, one of the issues that we're gonna have is Wi-Fi because connecting to a protected Wi-Fi network does not work. Connecting to an open does. Now, WPA2 or WPA3 authentication issues, but there is a TWRP flashable patch that I guess came out soon. So after we install his image, we will need to flash this as well. So we're gonna have to download this. Next up, we're gonna be using Light G apps, just like I did last time. They do have a version 14. So as you can see, it's called the, there's actually a couple of images for this. There's the recovery or the auto. So I'm just using recovery because I am gonna be in D TWRP anyway. And we're gonna be using G Light and it's a uh, ARM64 uh, for version 14. And we're also gonna need device ID, same thing like the last video, just so we could pull up the information and then we could get a uh, Google App Store working. And as I mentioned earlier, if you need to hide root access, you can use Magix. Now I already flashed the device onto a 32 gigabyte um, SD card. But if you want, you can actually flash this over to a SSD if you wanted to as well. I'm gonna hit continue, but I'm not gonna move this over to my Raspberry Pi yet. What I wanna do is actually go into Gparted. Again, same thing like in my last video, we're gonna expand the drive because when you first flash it, it's only gonna allocate about eight gigabytes. So what we wanna do is actually go in and expand that. And here we go. So I have the 32 gigabyte SD. You could see it only allocated about eight gigabytes. There's four gigabytes used and 4.6 unused. So what we're gonna have to do over here is just go into partition, resize and move. And we're just gonna extend this out all the way and apply. There you go. And while you're at the desktop, um, also grab a USB. It's easiest way to transfer files. I'm gonna stick it in and transfer the things that we downloaded, which is the light G apps and device ID. Those are the two main things that I really need right now. All right, so this is the first time it booted up. It took about like a minute or two just to get through it. But before I do any modifications to it, I do wanna show you some of the stuff that we have. Now, this is as clean as it can be. There's no software in here, except for like this nine software. Uh, I can go into settings and we're gonna check out some of the things that you could do. Now, scrolling down, um, here's the Raspberry Pi tablet. You can see the model number, Android 14. Uh, heading into system is where the interesting parts are. So if you go into Raspberry Pi settings, uh, you can reboot to recovery, which is something we're gonna set right now because we're gonna go into D TWRP. We're not actually using a headphone jack, we're using HDMI, so I'm gonna be switching this over to HDMI zero. That's where my display is connected at. Then I don't have to do rotations. And as my last video mentioned, this is very cool if you wanna use CEC. Uh, which allows you to control the Raspberry Pi or Android through your remote control on your TV. And then you got a few other things over here. Now I do like to put this on performance and the maximum frequency to 2000. Now generally it comes at 1500, but now the newer clocks on the Raspberry Pi 4 is set to 1800. So you can either set it to 1.8 or two gigahertz, it's up to you. Two might be a little bit better for Android. So I'm gonna be keeping it at that. If you wanna leave everything else on, like uh, SSH, VN, VNC, you can. And now there's more decoding software as well. So you can decode uh, H.265, um, H.264, and a few other options that you have over here. So I'm just gonna leave this as default. And now I'm gonna reboot the machine. Oh, also one more thing to check. Yes, I do have my storage, which is 32 gigabytes total, 6.4 used. Now I'm gonna pull down from the top left I'm gonna hit power and I am gonna restart the machine. All right, so we're now booted into D TWRP 
And the first thing I want to do is install. Do I have download? It's not in here because I made my own folder. And since it's the first time I booted, let's see if I could find it. Internal storage up one level, system root up one level. I don't think I'm going to find the files that I transferred over here. Data. Downloads. There you go. Found it. And we have this that we need to flash and this we need to flash. So I'm going to flash the Wi-Fi first. I'm going to flash this. Okay, and do not reboot. I'm just going to go back to the main menu, go to install, and then install Light G apps for ARMS official. And grab that as well. Okay, that didn't work. So I might have to use that other file that says auto. All right, and we are back to uh, the TWRP. And this time I actually downloaded, just in case, uh, Mind the G apps. Uh, so not only I have Light G apps and Mind the G apps uh, on the SD card right now, just to, just to be sure, I don't want to jump in and have to do this whole thing again. So I might as well just download it. So I'm going to head over to, where was it again? Data. And it should be a folder called Downloads. And in here, I have light apps. Now it's auto instead of recovery. So we're gonna give that a try. And if this doesn't work, then I'm gonna use mine the G apps. And again, it has a problem installing. I'm not too sure why, but this is what I used last time on Android 13. And if it's failing on this one, it's fine. Like I said, luckily I have this other one, mine the G apps, and I am gonna go flash this and this one works. So something's gotta be going on with the light G apps, which I'm not gonna dig into as long as this one works but i know the mind the g apps is a much bigger environment it actually installs more google dependencies than it does with light g apps so we're going to see where this goes but now once this is done we still need to format the data do a, a fresh install or fresh um or flash the main drive or something I'll, I'll show you i forgot what it's called but i'll show you in a sec all right there we go do not wipe yet uh we're going to do a wipe actually we don't need to do this one because we're going to wipe the whole data anyway so i'm going to go to wipe and do factory reset, there you go. I'm gonna do that. And then now I can reboot the system. And with this, I should have gapps installed along with um, the patch that we did for the Wi-Fi. All right, we have booted back into the desktop. That actually took like about four minutes after that was all installed. And my mouse is here. Let's see, is everything still loading? Because it seems much slower now. Android updates ready to go, connect to a network to continue. Uh, let's see if I could connect to a network because that was one of the settings that we were trying to do. And I could tell it's like still loading because everything is so slow. All right, so we do have the Play Store now. We do have Google Apps or this Google thing right here. I'm gonna go into settings. Right now, everything is just so slow. And yes, it seems to be connecting. Checking for internet access, I got the thing. Yeah, that patch works. So you do definitely need that Wi-Fi patch. And everything is so slow right now. I can't really use this. You see, this keeps popping up. Setting isn't responding. I'm gonna close the app this time. And see if I can go back into settings because I wanna up the frequency to at least two gigahertz. All right, we are back once more. I just had to let it do its system things. It took a little bit to set up, but I did get everything up and going uh, and it's running pretty smooth now. Um, going back into settings, I am using the eight gig version of the Raspberry Pi. Originally why I was running so slow, it was because this was actually a one gigabyte Pi that I had and it was just very sluggish. So yeah, um, at minimum it requires two gigabytes. So if I had a two gigabyte, I probably wouldn't have noticed the difference. Anyway, jumping into what we were talking about before, uh, getting into the Play Store, we do have to sign in. It says this device isn't Play Protected Certified, so da 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 da. You do have to go over to this little URL and we have to register the device. Now, I've done this before on the Android 13 and we do have to do this. Now, first thing we need to go is go to Files and grab that device ID. And that's what we need to register everything that we need. So I'm gonna go over to here. All right, now that I'm done grabbing the device info and everything, again, I'll leave all the links down in the description below. Uh, I registered with that website that you were supposed to go to, and I'm still waiting on it to happen. It takes a couple of hours, maybe less, it, it all depends. But I did notice a couple of things when I was using this, is that touchscreen, I mean, the mouse doesn't work on everything. It looks like I, I could click on here, 
but it doesn't work. I could hit tab and then select it like I would normally. So mouse cursor and keyboard doesn't work that great on this version. And same thing with I have Nextcloud installed. And if I was to do anything in here, I have the same problem where I have to like hit tab just to get through the menus. So I think it has to do something with the operating system itself, which we didn't experience this problem in Android 13. Now, if you want to know more detail about registering your device, check out my previous video. I do a little more clips over there on registering the device, but this time around, all I did was grab the device info, which I'm not going to show on screen, but grab the device info. Um, and once you go to that website, it's going to ask you to paste that uh, information down to certify your device. So give or take, like I said, last time when I did this, it took me, I think, a couple of hours before I got it to work. Uh, sometimes it's faster. I'm going to leave this because I do want to play around with the Play Store. So I'm going to jump back to this when this is working. All right, so we are back. It actually took about an hour or two just for it to register through Google. So I was able to get the net, uh, Play Store working. Also, I decided to install a few apps while I was at it just so I can skip the whole process of installing everything. But you can tell it does install apps. Uh, I'll pull up the store again. So where did it go? Play Store right over here. And there you have it. It does load everything. I logged in. I was able to download the apps that I want and it works. Now, first thing I wanted to check out was YouTube. And YouTube does work, it actually works pretty well. So I'm gonna load up a video right over here and I'm just gonna load up something from Nova Spirit Tech, which is my channel. And yeah, this is my DIY Steam Deck that I'm working on right now and I'll just click on that. Perfect. It plays very well. Uh, unfortunately, stats for nerds don't work so I can't get that to uh, play. So if I hit the gear icon, well, not here. Let me get to a video first. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here so from Nova Tech, and welcome back to Let the me get to a gear We're icon. Gonna I'm gonna go over here. It changes the playback and everything. So Additional started. settings. It doesn't even have that menu anymore. Like I just can't get uh, stats yeah, for nerds to come up. So there's no way to see if there's any drop frames or anything, but you can see that it does work, plays my videos pretty well, full screens easily. So videos, yes, it does play, but it does run into a slight issue with other video players. So right now I know that YouTube works, which is good. If I head into Netflix, here's the problem. It doesn't even want to work. It's not compatible with the device, which I didn't get this problem when I was using 13. So 14, uh, I can't get Netflix to work. It'll make me go to this website and that's it. I can't, I can't download anything else. I don't know what to say about that, but some video players might or might not work in your end. Now, another thing that I was testing is Brotato, which is a game that I play often on my mobile phone. It seems to want to load in the beginning like this. I could see the front of screen and it looks pretty good. Well, just text, but it doesn't want to load the game. You can see my mouse cursor and then the audio would start to kick in like it's playing, but this is how it looks like when you're trying to play a game. <laughs> well, at least this game. Heading back into that, so now we know like certain things work. Actually, a lot of things don't want to work. Netflix is not working. Touchscreen uh, works, but the mouse cursor doesn't want to click on certain things. Uh, certain games don't want to work like Brotato. Um, so I decided to try uh, another game, which I also play on my mobile, which is called uh, Necrosmith. And this is actually a PC port of this game. And it actually works pretty well in this device. It does take mouse input and touchscreen and everything. So it does work um, fairly well like it should. Actually, this game plays so much better on a bigger screen than on a mobile. Um, so I kind of regret getting this game for my mobile thinking it's going to be the same, but everything is so small to touch. But when you're on a screen this big, like a 1080 screen, it actually works pretty well. So if you guys don't know the concept of this game, it's basically you create these uh, creatures and you revive them and you release them and they will go hunting for you. All right, so while it did manage to operate and work there, like I said, were issues with the mouse pointer not clicking, certain apps not working, uh, even like a game as simple as Brotato, it wasn't working at all. Now, at this point right now, it is working, but I wouldn't say it's fully functional. Like even the Wi-Fi, I had to do that patch just to get the Wi-Fi to work with uh, WPA2 and a few other things, like I said, with uh, Brotato and all. So 
all in all, I would keep an eye on this because it's still generally a very new project. It just came out in October 11th, like about two or three weeks ago. So there will be improvements just like the 13. And if you're looking to install Android on uh, a Raspberry Pi, I would still recommend using Android 13 for now and not jump over to Android 14. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.